Hi everyone, Michael from Bullion Now, bullionnow.com.au. So we're going to do another Michael's Mailbox. We haven't done one for ages. So we thought we'd uh, we'd kick one off. We've loaded up probably the last half a dozen um, videos that we've released and we'll just go through some of the comments, respond to some of the, um, not every single comment obviously, but you know some of the ones that maybe require a bit more of a, an explanation rather than a, a few words typed. Or if um, the same question's being asked in different ways, you know, several different times and we'll um, we'll try and tackle it once rather than uh, have it go a couple of times. So we're going to kick off and by we I've got Connor in the background as well so he might uh, chip in every so often. Uh, one from John Edwards. This is the um, this is the live stream, some comments from the live stream. Um, so Michael, spot on about inflation. I've held an emergency stack of gold for over a decade. It has returned just over 6% per annum on average um, and preserved its purchasing power. Regrettably, I had to liquidate some for a family medical emergency, but glad it gave me the means to help my family out. Um, there's two things I'd like to touch on with that. It's a really great comment, John. I, I love it. Um, one is that it's it's maintained that 6% over time, and it does. It Every year, you will see that it, it matches, you know, maybe some years not quite as much and maybe more in others, similar as you see with some other real assets, where they always keep up with that... Um, that inflation, whatever it is going on. The other thing I wanted to really touch on though is your last comment there where you say, regrettably, I had to liquidate some. Now, it obviously is no one wants a family emergency in any form. I can absolutely sympathize with that one. But one of the things we sometimes forget is we actually buy gold for emergencies. We go out, buy it for a stash. So it's great to have it there when the world goes pear-shaped for you and you, you've actually got some means to liquidate rather than you know trying to fight with a bank and get a loan or or you know whatever else people need to do to um, to cover these things. So um, some really some really good points there. Uh, Melbourne Stacker, uh, big signature required on your parcels, and uh, I won't name the company. Just leaves it on the doorstep. Doesn't bother me too much because I go I can't be bothered going to pick it up anyway. But um, yeah, it's it's one of our big issues we're having is um, even though we put big stamps on that say signature required and all that sort of stuff. Uh, there are times when the couriers ignore it on us. So um, I apologise if it's happened to you. Don't be frightened of letting us know that that's happened because we do chase it back with the companies. Um, but we are trying to come up with a longer term solution to it because it is unacceptable. Um, looks like we hit a bit of a uh, a bit of a chord with the um, the withdrawing of cash from banks. We we're talking about how it's becoming more and more difficult to take your money out of a bank. Um, and there's a few people have made various resonating comments on that. Um, I don't want to go into it too much because it it can um, yeah it can blow out a little bit. But it's good to see that people are um, are realising that uh, actually it's it, it's not that the system is not as clear cut as it used to be. Even even 12, 12 18 months ago, um, things were a lot simpler than they seem to be now with the banks. Alrighty, moving on to the Bitcoin video. So. Uh, quite a number of people saw us release the um, the bitcoins uh, coins, so both in the gold and the silver, and they've been incredibly popular. Um, so a lot of people are really appreciating the way they look, and uh, a lot of the comments of "Wow, I've actually got some some real bitcoin," some meaning you know they've got not the electronic stuff, but stuff actually backed with um, with precious metals. So a lot of uh, a lot of good comments there. So uh, Michael Edwards is still chasing the Tudor beasts. I'm hoping to hear news on them very, very soon. Um, yeah, lot, lots of comments on the on the bitcoins. Um, somebody, uh, Cameron here, saying would love to get some in Ripple. Um, I think Ripple was the other one. We could have got Bitcoin, Ripple, and uh, no, it wasn't Ripple. It was Ethereum. My apologies. It was Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Dogecoin. We we got the Bitcoin ones. I wasn't so sure about the other one, so I didn't. I didn't actually order any of those from the wholesaler. But leave a comment below, and uh, we might even um, we might even see if we can chase some more up. Uh, you know, major questions in the Bitcoin one, just um, just comments of uh, of uh, support for it, really. So, which is good to see. Uh, then we had the Britannia's back in stock. Um, so a lot of people appreciating that they're finally back in stock, and a bit of a um, a bit of a discussion going on in there about the um, 
security features on the on the Britannia and I won't do it all over again because we've done a video on them but the Britannia is absolutely one of those ones where they've really gone to town on making sure all the security features are on the coin so which is great to see and we should support that more and more um, and it, it certainly does put some of the other mints to shame the way it does it a lot of good comments on your excellent camera work on it mate which is good to see this one always cracks me up. Um, so this, uh, I, I'm gonna say gentlemen, I'm making a bit of an assumption here, um, but uh, says, I like these guys, but before you buy, look around, you most likely find them cheaper. Like this coin you can find at the Royal Mint for uh, the equivalent of 24.97, get yourself more silver for the dollars they ship out fast. Um, it, it's a problem that we hit frequently where people from outside of Australia look at our pricing and they say, oh, that's expensive what they're actually doing is comparing it to US dollars, not Australian dollars. Um, we work in the Australian peso over here, which is far cheaper than the, than the US dollar at the moment. Um, so yeah, just if you're watching this and you're an international, just remember to compare our prices in Australian dollars, not in US dollars, and you'll actually find that there is very few that can compete with us on price around the world, and certainly not the Royal Mint. Um, so yeah, just, uh, just be careful you're making sure you're comparing apples to apples there. Ah, uh, this one, oh, this is the one where you interviewed me about some basic questions. Was it three basic questions or something? Yeah. Um, so, David, I'm late into bullion and even industrial metals, always believed in fiat currency. Uh, fiat currency, don't get me wrong, fiat, cu fiat currency has a purpose. Um, it's great, I owe you $100, here it is. But it's not a store of wealth, and that's what you've got to remember. Um, after what happened to the lorry drivers and frozen accounts, um, I researched bail-ins, etc. Yeah, look, um, really do that. I start looking at what's happening around the world in the Western countries that are very similar to your country, um, assuming you're watching this from one of the Western countries. Um, it, it's becoming more and more interesting the way that uh, some of the laws are being passed. Um, so... Uh, somebody commenting on our honesty. I certainly hope so. Video was great, relaxed conversation. Good stuff. That's what we're aiming for. Look, I, I know we're a business at the end of the day, and don't get me wrong, we absolutely are. But it's this type of educational stuff that really floats our boat, and we really want to get out there um, and talk about more and more. Silver Ghost. One should focus on what you know most about and, pure, and put more investment in that while diversifying as much as possible. Put some in physical, like property, metals, and play around gamble with the stock market cryptos for higher gains um and he, he goes on i'm a big fan and i said this in in the comments um in this video um i'm a big fan of yes absolutely having precious metals and diversification within the precious metal so don't just get gold or silver get gold and silver but also look at some of the others and in australia platinum platinum in my opinion not financial advice is a good way to go and it gives you that diversity within the one metal, within the one precious metal box, if you like. But there is also good diversity outside of that precious metal, and sometimes we lose sight of that. Um, there are other things that you can invest into to spread your risk and to increase your returns. I'm not a fan of diversified all costs because then you end up with just an average return because you get some good, some medium, and some terrible. Be selective, be intelligent about it, do your research, but don't put all your eggs in the, in the one only one basket. Uh, oh, this must have been, I made a comment about, I love the history of the coins. And uh, we had a customer come in that had, I can't remember now if it was his father's or his grandfather's sovereign that had been stitched into his, um, into his father's or grandfather's bomber jacket. Um, but yeah, SDI custom here, um, had a 1910 half sovereign placed in my father's hand two days after his birth. So that would have been a good one to hang on to. Um, yeah. Uh, what else have we got here? Beware of what you buy. This one seemed to hit a bit, <laughs> a bit of a, uh, a chord by the look of it, because um, there was almost 50 comments, I think, on it the other day. Um, so a lot of support for it. Um, a lot of people comparing some of the different things they've come across um, that 
I'm, I'm trying not to say the word scam because they're not scams so long as you understand what they are. If you want to buy these types of things because it's an interest for you or something along those lines, go for it. Where I don't like it, and this is what I say in the video, is where people start hiding behind terms and where they're trying to mislead you to think this is pure silver or pure gold when it's not actually, it's, it's um, gilted or it's um, effectively spray painted on. Uh, and that's where I have trouble. So I'd encourage you to actually view the video if you haven't seen it already. It's called Beware of What You Buy. But also to read the comments as people give examples of what they've seen and what they've come across. Um, because there's all sorts of ones there that um, that are highlighted. Um, yeah, there's one, another one here from SDI Custom. Uh, Michael, I sent you emails a while, back, a while back with photos of scams people were doing with gold coins, some of them Australian gold coins. Recently, I got an email from an Australian company selling real one ounce, one tenth ounce gold coins, but they will double plus more than their um, retail value at the time. Coins are on subscription of you know X dollars per month plus postage. Um, what I could buy from you for today's price of thirty one seventy nine, they were selling for um, seven thousand and nineteen. So you also have to be very careful of that as well. And I probably didn't emphasise that in the video. It's not just make sure what you're buying, make sure of the price that you're paying. Um, you know, even within our store, we sell things that are very close to spot and we sell some particularly coins that are quite a ways away from spot. Doesn't mean they're a bad buy, but be careful, make sure you know what you're buying and you do the research. And that's where you really do need to start building a relationship. And I've talked about this before, building a relationship with your, um, with your bullion dealer or your coin dealer with someone that you can trust and they a good one is worth their weight in gold and as someone who weighs quite a lot that's quite a lot um, but in all seriousness um, you know one that's working against you and just there to try and profit out of you um, will very quickly cost you a lot of money so be careful who you who you trust but find a good bullion dealer and listen to their advice and they you will make a lot of money out of them over time um, I like this one from Andrew. Good advice. I recommend bullion now highly. Well over 100 transactions without a fault. Always a pleasure dealing with BN. Thank you for the comment. I'd love to say we never make a, an error, but we do on the odd occasion. But uh, it's good to see occasionally that, um, that good news coming through. Uh, this is from Luke. Pure is pure and that's why I stay away from gold eagle coins because um, to melt it down you have to separate the other metals. No different to sterling silver. Um, and sidestepping slightly here, um, that is one of the other things that we had a customer in today that was trying to sell sterling silver. Now sterling silver is usually 92.5% um, silver and usually about 7.5% copper um, or one of those uh, type of metals. Um, it's all okay right up until the point you want to sell it back. Coins are different, these weren't coins. Um, until you want to sell it back because particularly in silver it's not pure and it does have to be separated out um, in the refining process and some metals are easy to refine out and some metals are not um, but if you've got a mix particularly with silver you've got to have enough of it to make it worthwhile for the refineries to actually separate out your batch and you know do the furnaces and all that sort of stuff that they've got to do to refine it so this person only had a couple of kilos of sterling silver um, and it wasn't worth our time or the refinery's time to say, yeah, we'll take that because you need to be, you, you need 20, 30, 40 kilos of the stuff to actually start making it worthwhile to send through. So be very careful about buying these non-pure things other than coins. Coins are a little different, but particularly people that say, well, I'm stacking, you know, silver candlesticks or that type of thing. It always worries me a little bit because you have to have enough of a quantity to make it worthwhile when you come to sell it. So just be aware of that one within the system. Okay, um, I'm reading this not just because they're telling us we're doing a good job, but for another reason. So this is from Ignition. I believe Bullion Now is not just the best bullion company in Melbourne, but Australia. Some time back, I purchased seven 20 gram sterling silver medallions off the internet. These gentlemen let me use the XRF to test them. They came in at two, two of them 99% uh, plus. Uh, oh, two of them came in at greater than 99%. Um, I continue to buy these at spot or 50% above when they come up. I also keep stacking my Perth Mint 49s 
uh, coins from bullion now, which is great. So the reason that I wanted to emphasize that was not the fact that he was praising us, but the fact that he brought them in. We are more than happy to use our XRF um, to test your stuff and to show you you know, if it's pure or not and, and have a discussion with you. Now, obviously, again, I come back to the fact that we're a business. So if there's a queue out the door, absolutely. If you're not a paying customer, we're absolutely going to have to prioritize the paying customers through and, um, and get them processed and, and get them on their way. But if there's no one in the store or, um, you know, you're buying something and you just want a coin um, tested or anything along those lines, we're actually really happy to do it. We encourage it because, again, as I said right back at the start, one of the reasons that we started this business, one of the reasons we do it, and one of the things that really floats our boat is the educational side of it. Yes, we have to make a profit, absolutely, and that's what we're here for. But we're also here to educate and, and getting people through the door and testing their stuff for them and having the discussion about, well, where did you buy it? How did you get hold of it? You know, this is great. It's, it's you know, it's pure. Or, oh, sorry, you know, you've, you've bought a counterfeit, you know, a, a fake. You know, and the whole discussion around that and, and to just get that education going. So if you've got something, don't bring in a wheelbarrow full of stuff, but if you've got, you know, one or two items that you want testing and you're coming into the store, bring them with you and we'd love to test them for you. It's, it's part of the whole service that we offer. Uh, what else have we got? Um, yeah, just a, a, lot of, a lot of support, which is great to see. Uh, can you explain the difference between sterling silver and pure silver? Yeah, sterling, this is from Irish Luck. So as I said, sterling silver is, um, it's a silver that's been mixed usually with copper um, to bring down its purity. And the reason they do that is uh, it increases strength. So that's the main reason that sterling silver is used. So if we go back um, to the old coins um, pre-45, I think it is, um, Australian currency because they were circulated currency they needed to stand up to the rigors of you know everyday um, people spending them so they made them 92 and a half percent silver and uh, the balance something else to give them that strength it's the same with our gold um, sovereigns they're not pure they're 22 carat or well somebody will correct me here I think it's 91.67 um, percent because if they were pure they'd wear out too quickly we need that extra mix in there to give them the strength to stand up by the everyday knocking around they get. Utah, get me too. If silver goes to $100, will you guys be buying it back at $100? Yes, absolutely. Um, we pay spot price. There, there are a couple of asterisks there. You know, the bar has to, if it's a bar or a coin, it has to be below, help me here, Connor, has to be below 100 ounces. So 3.2 kilos, 100 ounces. Um, and if you've got more than, I think it's 50 kilos, but I haven't checked the fine print on our website recently, but I'm pretty sure it's 50 kilos in one hit, then yeah, then it's by negotiation on the day. But um, yeah, if you, you're below that 100 ounces in size or 50 kilos in total mass, um, absolutely, we pay spot, whether spot's a dollar an ounce or a hundred dollars an ounce, we'll be paying it the whole way along. Uh, yeah, Northwest Stacker, when spot is up, all the fakes come out. You're absolutely right. The higher spot goes, the more fakes we see because it now becomes worthwhile making the fakes. When silver is only $20 an ounce, it's unless it's a very unusual coin, it's not worth producing the fakes. All right, our PAMP unboxing. Yay! It's good. There's a couple of comments that I've been skipping over, and I think the next video as well has a few of the same where, um, you know, the website's looking a bit bare, fellas, what's going on effectively. Um, we're having trouble with shipping. At the end of the day, um, we're having trouble getting supplies in. You're going to see it gets patchy, and I suspect this is going to last for a number of weeks, possibly months, where you're going to see supply patchy. So we haven't seen kangaroos on our website for a few days. It's been hit and miss. I've listed 100 here and 100 there. Sorry about that. Uh, I thought I'd put it on silent. Uh, 100 here, 100 there sort of thing. But last night we took delivery of, I think it was about 3,000 kangaroos. So we can actually start putting them back onto the web. Um, kilo bars from Perth Mint were much the same. We were getting a bit short on, so you saw the numbers shrinking down, but we've taken a big delivery and we're back online again. Um, you're going to see things come and go. And it was great to get these PAMP bars in finally. They took their time coming in from overseas, um, but they've arrived and we've got, we've sold out of the 100 gram cast bars in the PAMP and the platinum coins, we had platinum eagles and maples. They're all gone, I understand. But the rest of the PAMP is still there and we've still got heaps in. And I believe, and Connor's gonna correct me if I'm wrong, 
we've got another delivery with some 20 gram and 50 gram pamps in. So you'll see those come up on the web very shortly as well. So we are still getting stuff in. Stuff's coming in and going out relatively quickly. Um, you can place pre-orders for some items, not all items. We certainly won't take it for things that we're not that we haven't ordered and know are on their way and in the system. Um, so you know, I'm happy with Perth Mint Kilo bars or those types of things that they're bread and butter, and we know we get they're getting them in. So it's not a big deal. But if you said, "Oh, I want to pre-order Bitcoin coins," <laughs> I'm not going to guarantee we're going to get them in ever again. So I wouldn't take that type of pre-order. But absolutely, you can give us a ring. Uh, can't do it over the web, but give us a ring. 1300 84 84 10 or, or send us an email to sales at bullion now and we can organize or discuss a pre-order and any conditions that might be surrounding it so both parties understand where they're coming from with it okay um, but yeah it was good to see a lot of positive comments um, I like this one because they agree with me this is from Rusty Shackelford I'm American and I agree with you on the Eagles the Silver Eagle has too high a premium the Gold Eagle is meh and the Platinum Eagle is the only design I like. The Eagle is beautiful as it soars. I, to I couldn't have said that better. Um, and I actually thought it was just me and being in Australia that I thought the e Silver Eagle premium was too high. But some of the feedback I'm getting from some of the Americans is it's too high over there as well. So um, yeah, it's not just us. I've got to say, I think it's overrated, but I love it in the Platinum. Um, find the Canadian bars to be beautiful. Absolutely. The Royal Canadian Mint does a stunning job. Um, <laughs> sorry Dark Hearts it wouldn't be right to keep calling them Epic Unboxings without our mate Joe unfortunately we live on <laughs> have the gold buffaloes gone up on the site yes yes they have and yes they're sold out they were the other thing that had sold out um, <laughs> Scarlet Nightmare I agree with the inferiority of the Imperial Measurement System but technically us cowboys drive on the right side of the road. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> you still confuse me when I go over there. And I, I gotta tell you, those flipping four point intersections where it's first come, first serve, get yourself some roundabouts over there, guys. Make it organized. <laughs> What's in the green monster box on the top left shelf? What room are we in? We're in the studio or we're in here? Yeah, that's, uh, that's just our audio gear. Oh, it's the audio gear, I'm gonna say. I've got no idea. Just the microphones that you're wearing around your neck right oh, now. Okay. That's, that's what's right. up in that box. Yeah, because if it's in here, it's just some dumping ground. So, yeah, don't know. Why is it that we... I, I applaud your observation, SDI Custom, but you're meant to be focused on the thing in front of me, <laughs> not what's hiding behind me. <laughs> uh, yeah, just a lot of support. Uh, stupid question, but I need to know. How do you trust getting your stock in the mail? Ah, David McLeish. Um, look, mate, it's, uh, i got to say, it does keep me up at night, um, the amount of stuff that we have floating around the world at any one time um, does concern me. We have very, 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 very good insurance. Um, the tracking is very good, although not as good as I would like at times. Um, but, yeah, it's a very valid question. But we are, any package that you order from Bullion Now is fully insured, fully tracked, and has signature we've paid for signature on delivery and it should be come through with that um, just to comment on the insurance and again I'm, I'm going off on a tangent for a second um, with the insurance people think that the instant that they report it not turned up that the insurance will cover it there is a process that's got to be worked through um, so it can take a couple of weeks for the insurance to actually we've got to get the courier to say yes this is a write-off before they'll do that they want to strip search their um, you know depots and all that sort of stuff so it does take a couple of weeks for the insurance process to go through but it does actually move through so um, we will honor it don't stress still waiting on the one gram platinums to arrive I have a sneaking suspicion that they may have turned up and I just haven't unpacked undone the unboxing on it so give me a couple of days on that one give me a maple over a buffalo or eagle anytime I love the maple I really like the buffalo not a big fan of the eagle I've made that fairly clear I don't know. Mm, the maple's a cleaner finish, I'll give you that. I love the buffalo. I think it should be called a bison, but I love the buffalo. Don't know. We'll have to agree to disagree on that one. And the little hero. 
This is the last one, I believe. Yes, it is. So the comments on the Little Hero. Uh, so if for anyone that doesn't know, the Little Hero was the exclusive that uh, Bullion Now did, the Australian exclusive uh, Bullion Now did with the Perth Mint. Um, so the silver ones are gone. Um, there may be a couple left over when we actually sort it all out, but don't go funny and saying, oh, you know, I want to go on a wait list because we don't do that sort of stuff. Um, you know, it's they're, they're sold out, so chase them elsewhere if uh, if we don't have them on our website. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's the fourth in the Australian Nugget series that Perth Mint has produced, um, and it's a it's a great coin and it's a great set to get involved in. Because uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Connor, thirty thousand I think it was for the silver, and seven and a half thousand for the gold was the mintage limits, um, and. By far and away, the majority of those went overseas. Um, we didn't even get a chance to buy them in this country, so um, grab them while you can. Uh, Laurie Williams, thanks, Michael, for showing us unobtainium, unobtainium, something which will be happening soon to most precious metals now that the world has woken up. Love to see gold, half ounce, quarter ounce, tenth, twentieths, and the same in silver. Cheers. Uh, are you referring to the nugget in those sizes? They, the tiger does them in those sizes. Um, I don't know, I don't know, I'd have to ask the Perth Mint if they'd consider doing them in those sizes. That'd be interesting. Um, SDI Custom, when I looked almost 2,000 silver coins, two hours later, less than 500. You snooze, you lose. Hmm, that's exactly right. Um, they went through very quickly. Uh, WAP High, I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it. The one ounce uh, Welcome Stranger and Hand of Faith were just issued in silver. No, they were issued in gold as well. Um, so if you're chasing the gold ones, have a look, uh, keep an eye out for them. You see them crop up every so often, but the price of them is really starting to go up. Um, yeah, and that's the comments. So that's it. So if you're, um, uh, yeah, if you, we, we try and do this every week. I know it's been a few weeks since I've had a chance to do it. We try and do it every week. So if you've got some questions, slot them in under below here. Um, we'll try and answer them, whether it be, my apologies, I've got phones going left, right and centre. Um, whether it be... <laughs> Start again. You can take it if you want. Oh, I've hung up on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All righty, so that's it for uh, the, um, the YouTube comments or Michael's mailbox. Um, remember, if you've got any questions, burning questions, you can either slot them in underneath here and we'll discuss them in the next uh, Michael's Mailbox, or if it's a quick answer, we'll type it out and uh, respond to it as soon as we can. Don't be frightened of commenting on all the other videos. We try and encourage the conversation and join in where we can. Uh, we really like to uh, encourage that. Um, stay tuned on Friday the... Friday the 1st of April. How could I forget April Fool's Day? will be our next live stream at 2.30 Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. That's the last time I'm going to have to say that on Friday because we go back to uh, non-daylight savings time on the Sunday. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned for that. We're going to have Matt in. Um, hopefully some of the other guys will stop by. I'll try and keep my smiling face there at different times. Um, and Reuben and Connor, no doubt, will um, be looking over our shoulders, making sure we're behaving ourselves. Um, no special this week, I believe, and uh, that's about all I've got to say. So tune in, and we'll see you again soon. See ya.